Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to add an external activity LED to your Raspberry Pi 3. Really simple to do. You don't need to solder anything. So if you've ever looked at a Raspberry Pi 3 while it's running, there are two lights here, a red light and a green light for activity. It'll show you when it's reading or writing to the SD card. Today we're going to add an external LED. This is great for case mods and things like that. It just adds a little extra to whatever you're doing. Some people might not be into it, but I think it's a cool idea and it's really simple to do. So this method requires using two GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 3. Now it only puts out a maximum of 3.3 volts, so pretty much any LED will work without a resistor. These here are 5 volt LEDs. I got them on Amazon. I'll leave links to everything I'm using here. I'm just going to go with the blue. It's easier to see. You can use any color you want. Now when we're looking at these LEDs here, the longest lead on the LED will always be positive. The shorter one's going to be negative. This is important to take note of, but it won't hurt anything if you swap them around. It just won't light up. The next thing you're going to want to get your hands on are some GPIO jumpers or wire jumpers. They're named all kinds of stuff on the internet. I'll leave a link. These are female to female. You don't need to solder anything if you're going this method. So first things first, we want to connect a ground wire. So there are a bunch of ground leads here on the GPIO header. I'm going to be using the last one here. And I'm going to be connecting my positive to pin 19. Now you can swap this out in the config.txt, but for this tutorial, I'm using 19. I will be leaving a text file down below in the description you can download. It'll make it really easy to copy and paste, but it is set for pin 19 on the positive. Now, all we need to do is connect our LED the longest lead on the LED goes to positive, the shortest one goes to negative. And that's it for the wiring. If you want to make this more permanent, you might want to solder the LED to the end. You'll just clip off the two leads on the end near the LED and solder it directly to the wires. Now we need to move over to the computer. You can do this on the Pi, but I'm going to be doing it on a computer. It's really easy to do. We need to edit the config.txt on our SD card. I have tested this on RetroPie and Raspbian, but it should work on any operating system as long as it has a config.txt on the SD. So here we are at my Windows machine. First thing you need to do is download Notepad++. Do not try to edit anything with the built-in Notepad in Windows. Stuff just gets jumbled up. Notepad++ is easy to install and it's safe to download. Go ahead and insert your SD card into your PC, either with a USB card reader or if you're on a laptop, use the port on that. Find the drive that's labeled boot and inside of there, we want to edit the config.txt. So we're just going to right click on it, open it with Notepad++. Now I've left this in the description. You can download it. We want to paste this right at the bottom. Like I mentioned, mine is set to pin 19. If you want to change it, you can always change it at the end here. When changing the number, make sure you refer to a chart of the GPIO layout on the Pi 3. You can't just count down and go pin 4, I want to put it there. GPIOs are numbered All I did weird. was copy, paste it right at the very end, go to File, Save. Now we can shut everything down, and we're good to go. All we have to do now is plug the SD card back into the Raspberry Pi, make sure your LED is hooked up to the correct GPIO pins, and boot it up. So I got everything set up. I will leave a link to this monitor. Everybody asks about it. It's very expensive, but it is 5 volts, 1080p IPS. You can get it on Amazon. I'm going to plug my Raspberry Pi in. You'll get a couple flashes out of the green LED on the board. As soon as it reads the config.txt, our new LED will be working as the activity light. So anytime it writes or reads, this little LED will flash. This will work in conjunction with a safe shutdown switch or a safe reset switch. You can even run them from the same ground, but you cannot have the same GPIO pin programmed as the shutdown. As soon as it starts reading the card here, we'll get some more flash in. I just set this card up. I only put a few ROMs on it just to show you. And like I mentioned, this will work with any Raspberry Pi operating system as long as you can edit that config.txt on the boot partition. I tested it on RetroPi and Raspbian. Let me go to something with snaps in it. 
So every time we load a snap, it's got to read the card, so you'll get a quick flash out of it. And when you load a game, you'll get some flashing. I think it's pretty cool to add to a case project or something like that. Let's say you threw a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of an old PlayStation 1 case. You might want to add this. Just adds a little extra. So I just loaded up a Neo Geo game. These are pretty small, so it's not going to flash that much. It doesn't need to read all the time from this ROM. I'll just choose a character real quick. Mess around for a bit, and then we'll exit the game. I also want to show you what it does when you shut down. So I'll press my start and hotkey. Bring us back into the emulation station menu. I'll just demo it out a little more here. Every time it loads a snap, it needs to read the card, so you're going to get some flashing. And when you shut down, press start, exit, shut down system. It's going to flash while it's shutting down, but it will not give you the last 10 flashes. The LED on the board will still do the last 10 flashes for the shutdown process. I'll boot it up one more time. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this because it takes a little bit to boot. But that's it. I mean, if you want to add this, super simple to do. Links in the description to that text file. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.